We are go for main engine start, T minus six, five, four, three, two, one, and liftoff of the Space Shuttle Discovery with the Hubble Space Telescope, our window on the universe. There was a great deal of anticipation throughout the scientific community when the Hubble telescope was first launched in April 1990. A project that had been conceived and in the planning stages for more than 30 years soon ran into problems, and NASA wasn't getting the photos that the astronomers had hoped for. Hey, Flight, I'll come back with the answer. I need answers now. It was not working. The telescope wouldn't point, it wouldn't track. When it did take pictures, they didn't look right. And our team really entered from the side with sort of a fresh view, analyzing just our images. And we were the ones who told the whole project what had happened. Do any of these galaxies lend themselves? Dr. Sandra Faber is the chair of astronomy and astrophysics at UC Santa Cruz. A noted astronomer, she was awarded the prestigious 2009 Bauer Award and a 250,000 cash prize for achievement in science. The Bauer is among the nation's richest science prizes. While she spent most of her career studying, teaching, and lecturing about the cosmology of distant galaxies, Dr. Faber was one of the first to point out that NASA needed to fix Hubble. Well, among astronomers, there was mourning, a sense of mourning, really. And NASA felt so embarrassed. Uh, what a tragic misstep, visible to the whole world after all this hype. Eagle? Go. Peacock? Go. Discovery? Go for Hubble release. I think, you know, paradoxically it brought out the best in everybody at this point, this massive failure, and we all had to pull together in order to make it right. Okay, Charlie. It took several years to come up with a solution to the problem, but in time, there was another space launch to repair the Hubble in December 1993. It was like putting corrective lenses on a large school bus that cost $1.5 billion. The first pictures from Hubble were blurry and looked something like this. Thanks to a number of scientists, the Hubble sees clearly now, and the results have been spectacular. There was a ballroom full of 2,000 astronomers and eagerly waiting to see these new pictures, and uh, it was a great moment for me. One of my graduate students was a leader here doing the presentation. They showed the before, fuzzy, and after pictures that were brilliantly sharp, beautiful. They had chosen objects to compare deliberately. It was fantastic. Astronomers stood up and cheered. It was just great. Hubble was designed to be like your Honda or your Ford or your VW. It gets a tune-up every so often. There have been five repair missions to Hubble in the last 20 years, with the last one coming in May 2009. Hubble should be working until around 2014. Cross your fingers that your Accord or your Jetta will last that long. It looks out in space large distances, and when a telescope looks out in space, it also looks back in time. It's called the look back effect. That's because it takes a while for light to travel from there to here. So if you look at the sun, you're actually looking eight minutes back in time. If you look at Jupiter, it's 40 minutes. Nearest star, four years. Hubble will take you 13 billion years back in time. A look back in time also reveals that a young girl named Sandy growing up in Ohio fell in love with the stars. I was a science geek as a kid. I was the classic science geek, but I was always the most interested in astronomy. And I never had a telescope, but I had binoculars, my dad's binoculars. I'd go out in the backyard, suburban Cleveland, lie down on the grass in the summertime and look up at the sky with the binoculars, star charts, reading books about astronomy. I was always an astronomy geek. Faber obtained a BA with high honors in physics from Swarthmore College in 1966, and she went on to receive her PhD in astronomy from Harvard University in 1972. Along the way, Faber has continued to do research while working on the Keck Telescope in Hawaii and her close involvement with Hubble. Despite a long and distinguished career, Faber remains passionate about science, the delight of discovery, and the joy of being part of a university. Well, there are two things that are still driving me that I find just as interesting as they ever were. The first thing is that um, 
it's just a wonderful thing to discover something new. The other thing that has really been important to me is influencing other people. Because as a professor, you're in a wonderful position to mentor people. Most of Faber's entire life has been spent studying the heavens. There is a long-standing and distant connection between a girl named Sandy in Cleveland and an Italian astronomer who built a telescope more than 400 years ago named Galileo. The Galilean telescope was probably the most important scientific instrument in history. It told us that there was a universe out there and that we could understand it with the same laws of physics that we have here on Earth. Hubble continues in that tradition. It's a great leap forward for astronomers, but it brings these wonderful images that people can look at and they can see the link between planet Earth and the wonderful universe out there. We're all one gigantic cosmic fabric. We belong in this universe. It produced us.